Okay. I'll probably get in all sorts of copyright trouble for that. Happy Groundhog Day, uh, everyone. In the last couple of days, we've been talking about... Let me check my sound level here, because I may have... Hang on just a second. Yeah, we're okay. The last couple of days we've been talking about reincarnation and things like that. And here it is, uh, Groundhog Day. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the groundhog today uh, did not see his shadow. So uh, supposedly that means an early spring. It's kind of funny that, that we... Just even in uh, in sort of white bread America, uh, we we tend to want to celebrate this day. Actually, it's uh, Imbolic or or uh, uh, Candlemas, which is just exactly uh, halfway between the winter solstice and spring. So it's one of those cross quarter. Uh, Days that uh, that pagans have have always loved to to celebrate, and uh, but the idea of the Groundhog Day and the the movie I just showed you the the clip for and the funny little funny little uh, tie in with I got you, babe. Uh, the the movie Groundhog Day is pro is probably one of the heaviest uh, spiritual <laughs> reincarnation-y, there is no time kind of, uh, 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 you can tell that there was just a, a, a team of Buddhists uh, uh, writing it. Because uh, because the premise is pretty much what we've been talking about for the last uh, uh, couple of days. I even posted my song. Uh, I once was the hero of Megiddo. Uh, just on Facebook, you can just scroll down my page and find it, or just look it up. Uh, it, it's a, it's the same Groundhog Day kind of uh, premise. Uh, I once was. Uh, a baker of marzipan cakes. I once was the hero of Megiddo, a painter of dragons on porcelain plates. I once was the harlot of Jericho. Each lifetime's a turn on the merry-go-round. The horses go up and go down, turning as we spin through eternity's spiraling night turning, returning, until we get it right. I once was a, uh, a bully who pushed the wrong boy, I, and I once was the wrong boy to bully. I once hurled a Greek from the ramparts of Troy. I once speared a mastodon woolly. Oh, you, you, you get the idea. You get the idea. Um, each lifetime's a turn on the merry-go-round. Horses go up and go down. So we've got these two kind of motions going. This is the spiraling night, and the horse is going up uh, and down. Uh, but the, the idea that Bill Murray in the movie uh, kept waking up at the, the same hour repeating the same day over and over again. Same events happen to him around him that he can't seem to, to, to stop. And uh, he's kind of an asshole in the movie at the, at the very beginning and, and rude and everything else. But, uh, and try as he might to, uh, to make the whole thing stop, uh, uh, he like kills himself over and over, over again, and still wakes up at six o'clock the next morning to Sonny and Cher's 
Uh, it's a fabulous movie. Okay, it it's funny, it's brilliant, and everything else, kind of. But the same team that made Ghostbusters, same writers and things, and. Uh, uh, but the, the idea behind it is transcendently profound because in a sense that's that's what we do and, and yesterday or the day before I, I uh, shared with you my story about the reincarnation tree and uh, the, the uh, revelation that that all of your debts and all of your your assets and your liabilities uh, that you perpetually, eternally create and neutralize over and over and over again. You carry it. You carry it all with you. You know the statement, you can't take it with you. No, you can't not take it all with you. Just like Bill Murray, I'm sorry, you can't. No, you wake up. I got you, babe. So in the movie, he finally catches on. Well, if I've got this same day to repeat over and over and over again, why don't I learn to play the piano? Why don't I start taking piano lessons? Why, why don't I start being a good guy? Why don't I start being generous with people? Why don't I start being generous with myself? If I know the same things are going to happen over and over again, why don't I just take steps to prevent the bad things from happening as much as I personally can? And slowly, repeating day after day after repeating day, he refines the aspect of his character. He turns into the wonderful, joyous person that he has the potential, which is actually his true identity. It's a pretty cool movie, okay, and, and uh, uh, it, it's sad that uh, uh, it's it's not played in every. <laughs> it's sad that people don't watch it at least once once a year. Groundhog Day is a perfect year to do it. Okay, that's my little talk. Uh, as you know, I'm writing a book about. Uh, uh, the magical aspect of tarot and how to how to uh, uh, how tarot is a as a real real magical weapon uh, can be installed installed in the magician uh, anyway it's a, it's a tarot book and it's a it's a different kind of uh, angle of tarot book and it's going to it's going to require or at least if you get into the spirit of it, it's going to, uh, if you get in the spirit of it, you will create your own tarot deck, which the members of the Golden Dawn were obliged to do. And most everybody who, uh, who uh, kind of gets seriously into that, uh, uh, modern Western Hermeticism uh, at least toys with the idea of creating their own tarot deck. Well, you got to start somewhere to, uh, to do it. And uh, so, and I'm working hard on it. I'm supposed to finish it up uh, uh, between Imbolic and Ostra. Okay, I've, I've, I've got uh, I've got an eighth of the year to uh, to finish it up. And uh, in researching it, uh, I tried to look up uh, other things that I've done over over the years uh, that encapsulates certain uh, 
certain things about the tarot. And uh, many years ago, the, the Gordon brothers, Richard and David Gordon, uh, who uh, uh, the record, uh, the musicians and record producers that uh, do the most marvelous magical, magical uh, ambient kind of new agey music, which the best of that genre, uh, did an album called The Music of Tarot. And they asked me to do the liner notes uh, for it uh, and uh, to describe the all the tarot cards. <laughs> describe all the tarot cards uh, in a liner note. Okay. So I, I love their music. I love the guys who know them personally. There's no way I wasn't going to, to uh, do it. But I had to, to compress a whole lot of stuff in just this very few words. And I was going over it uh, uh, yesterday, actually day before yesterday. And I thought, well, why don't I uh, share this 1998 album liner notes to the music of, of the tarot uh, by uh, Stephen and, and David Gordon. For centuries, the beautiful and mystical, mysterious images of Terra have captivated the imagination of Western civilization. The earliest example date from the 14th century, and it is commonly believed they were introduced to Europe by nomadic gypsies who used the 78 cards as a fortune-telling device. But as, a mod as modern students have discovered, tarot is much more than a parlor game. It's a living, evolving pictorial storybook of the divine. The entire deck is structured and organized in uh, accordance with the ancient principles of the Hebrew Kabbalah. And each card not only represents a divine aspect of nature, but also triggers the corresponding psychic center in the human consciousness. Now, I would have been happy just to leave it right. There you go, boys. That's liner note. But no. Here's what I did with the trumps. The Major Arcana, part one, the fool through lovers. Divine wisdom is foolishness to we mortals. What made the pre-existent absolute forsake the perfect bliss of nothingness in order to initiate creation? We cannot answer. We only know that the universe springs from a great zero. Appropriately, our odyssey begins as a babe in a blue egg or a handsome young fool, neither male nor female, gazing guilelessly into the sky before stepping off a precipice into a vast abyss. Tumbling through the void, the fool becomes the all and is transformed into a progression of archetypal characters and images. As the magus, the all has become the self-conscious, directed, concentrated will. This cosmic magician functions as a conduit, transferring that which is above to that which is below. The weapons of his magic are the wand with which he creates, the cup with which he preserves, the dagger with which he destroys, and the disc with which he redeems the world. His counterpart is the high priestess. Only the virginal goddess of eternity is worthy to become the great mother of fertility. Her chaste truth is of such purity that it can be veiled only by undulating waves of light. As the magus is the will of creation, the high priestess is the idea. 
The union of the Magus and the High Priestess transforms them both, she into the Empress, the Great Mother Goddess, Gate of all life, and he into the Emperor, Lord of Patriarchal Power, Imperious Director of Energy. His marriage to the Empress is of primary importance to the governance of the cosmos. For their child, the Hierophant, will unite the macrocosm of the world of the gods with the microcosm, the world of humanity. He is the God-man, symbol of human evolution in the new age, when each of us must be responsible for our own spiritual destiny. That which is above is united and harmonized in each individual with that which is below. And there is no bond that can unite the divided, but love. In the lover's card, all of the previous characters achieve their synthesis. Ecstasy dissolves the illusion of separateness. Through the thundering silence comes the oracle of the gods. Part 2. The Chariot Through Art and art is also temperance. Riding as a triumphant king, the knight of the Holy Grail conveys the prescient secret of life in a starry canopied chariot. The blood is the life, cosmic equivalent of evolving DNA, carried by the charioteer through the sea of infinite generations. The process of creation finds a perfect partner in the manifest goddess of adjustment, adjustment or justice. With her golden scales, she equilibrates all energies, forces, and principles. Against the feather of her perfect truth, she weighs the hearts of humanity. The hermit stands upon his lonely mountaintop and gives his light to the world. It's also he who descends into the underworld of our subconscious, if we allow him, and will guide us to the celestial heavens of super-consciousness. From this spiritual vantage, we can see the cyclic nature of creation, an ever-changing, ever-increasing, ever-diminishing wheel of fortune. And the power which turns the wheel is the primal undirected lust or strength of solar energy, symbolized by a beautiful goddess astride a great lion. It is she who now bears the Holy Grail. The still blue waters that suspend the fool as a babe also serve to reflect. Is it you? Or is it the hanged man who is upside down? His self-sacrifice is not an occasion for mourning. Death is life itself. The caterpillar dies to become the butterfly. The maiden dies to become the mother. Without the great transformer, there can be no new beginnings. A royal Marriage, the alchemical union of opposites, is celebrated in the art or the old te temperance card. Male and female, sun and moon, are conjoined to create the elixir of life. Fire is poured upon water and water upon fire to produce the rainbow seal of a divine covenant. And finally, part three, the devil through the universe. All matter is born from the blending of darkness and light. The fearsome appearance of the devil projects the illusion that we are hopelessly enmeshed in material existence. But the material world is our school, not our prison. Ignorance and superstition are the true devils that would bind the human spirit. So long as our eyes are closed, we remain in darkness. Old fears and attitudes must be destroyed like a lightning-struck tower. 
Once illusion is annihilated, true meditation can begin, and illumination rises within like a evening star. Like the images in our dreams, the moon is a portrait of our shifting unconscious. She appears to shine, but merely reflects the light. She appears to change shape, yet it is only her ever-changing position to the sun, the true symbol of life, light, love, and liberty. Our ancient ancestors in their ignorance saw the sun as dying, a dying god, sacrificed daily and yearly, only to resurrect each morning and each spring. So deeply ingrained was this image that we believed ourselves also subject to death. A death that requires continual, elaborate rituals to assume our, to assure our life after death. In older tarot decks, this process was portrayed in the card entitled The Last Judgment. With the new aeon, however, has come the dawn of a new consciousness. We know the sun does not die, nor does it need to be resurrected. Night, winter, death are all illusions. A sh simple shifting of a shadow. Our spiritual identity has now shifted from the earth to the sun. As such, we close the cycle of trumps by taking our proper place in the universe, dancing like the divine fool in the center of the belt of the zodiac, ready, ready to withdraw once again into nothingness. Well, that's how I tried to encapsulate the dynamics of the greater arcana. Um, I went on and did the same thing with the lesser arcana, but I'm not going to subject you uh, to that this morning, uh, perhaps tomorrow or, or another day. At the moment, uh, we've got our Groundhog Day tree up, and uh, Constance and I have to uh, uh, decorate it uh, before the Groundhog uh, comes with his shadow to uh, bless it with his uh, spray of musk. <laughs> I, I wish you the same joy. Until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself, be good to each other. I think Constance is in the kitchen. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will. See you tomorrow.